taking a closer look at the menu system. Now, again, I know this is fairly basic stuff, but we need to make sure that we all understand the basics. Right here is the ribbon. This was introduced back in Office 2007. I also remember when this happened. I was in the middle of teaching computer maintenance in high school, and I remember when Microsoft Office made the jump, and it caused all sorts of people going, what is going on? But you're probably used to it if you're one of the younger folks out there. And the idea behind the ribbon was that it offered you a quick view of the options under each tab, as opposed to, like I said earlier, where you'd have to click on a tab button and you would get a drop down. Now, this is in contrast to other programs where you might have to click a button and get a drop down. For example, a lot of Adobe products have that where you click on a tab and you get a drop down of different options. The ribbon is just a different way of presenting that information. Taking a look first at our file and backstage. And we already took a look at this when we looked at the versioning of our Excel product. To get to the backstage, we click over here on file. And this brings us to our backstage. Most of the options back here have to do with something known as file management, how we manage our files. You also find the option to print right here as well. Our next tab is our home tab. Right here is our home tab. There is going to be a lot of formatting options here on the ribbon. If you take a look here, notice there are some little arrows that point down right here and here. When you see that, there's more options there. When you click on it, this is actually called a dialog box launcher. It opens a, guess what, dialog box where you have more options. What you see here are your generally used items, your more commonly used items. But when you have the dialog box launcher button, this is where you can see more of the more detailed options, maybe more of the options that people don't really use on a regular basis, and you can find them there. Looking now at the insert tab, we take a look at this ribbon, and you find things like pivot table tools. Pivot tables are in the more advanced course. We're not going to really talk about them in this course. You have illustrations, you have charts, and you have spark lines. In this class, we will take a look at illustrations, we will take a look at charts, and we will take a look at spark lines in other units. The page layout tab brings us to this ribbon. And here you're going to find formatting options as they relate to page setup. You can play with themes and change your entire look of your project. You have different print options that you can find here, as well as arrangement options. So for example, you can bring things forward and back, and you can align things to the page or to margins and different items. The formula tab brings you to a whole bunch of different options for formulas. And we will spend time, we actually have an entire unit dedicated to formulas that we'll take a look at. But this is where you find formulas. Keep in mind, there are over 460 different formulas out there that Microsoft provides you. If you want a complete list, you can Google it. And Excel has a page where you can find them alphabetically. Like I said, over 460 something formulas out there. Next, we have the data tab, which shows you this ribbon, and you can find data management, filtering, and sorting. We'll take a look at data management in another unit as well. Your review tab is where you find items that you can use to review your project. You have tools to review your work, you can add and review comments, and you can protect your project. The view tab right here deals with visuals and you can manipulate the windows displayed. Well, again, like the other things, take a look at some of this in different units as well. The help tab right here is where you go for additional help. It offers ways to get help and offer help, which is pretty cool. You can contact customer support from here. You can provide feedback. You can get additional training. You can be part of a community and what's really cool is if there's a feature that you'd like to see included in Excel, you can suggest that you can submit a request for a future feature. Our next tab is the developer tab. Now you might see that I don't have a developer tab up here. It goes from view help to Acrobat, which is a plugin, but I don't have developer tab. Where would I find the developer tab? 
Well, developer tabs are not enabled by default. Remember, Excel is guessing what the average user is going to use and the average user doesn't use the developer tab. So it hides it, but it's easy enough to find and turn on. So let's follow along. If you have Excel open in front of you, now would be a good time to get it open and to follow along. So here we go. Over to your file tab, we're going to go to the back stage. Click on file, scroll down to options, click on options. To the left side, we're looking for customize ribbon. We're going to click on that. And over here, we have customize ribbon. As we look down, we can see different tabs that we already have available. We have the home tab, the insert. Notice I have something called the draw. That's not enabled. Page layout, formulas, data, review, view, et cetera, et cetera. I can turn on the developer tab by clicking right there. Now watch up here while I click this. I click the developer tab. Okay. Nothing happens yet. Watch when I click OK. Notice we now have the developer tab. From the developer tab, we can do things in something called Visual Basic. Now we're not going to look at macros in this course. That is more for the advanced Excel course. But we have different options here that we can really get into some of the guts behind how Excel works. One of the things that you want to be able to do when you're working on Excel or really any program is keep your hand away from the mouse as much as possible. There are shortcuts for almost everything out there and there's a whole bunch and sometimes you forget what they are. A great way to get a cheat sheet on your shortcuts is simply to hit the alt key on your keyboard. So press the alt key on your keyboard and you get the shortcut commands for everything there. You can see right there. Now to get them off, you again click Alt and they disappear. Be aware that the more you use Excel, the more you use these shortcuts, the more second nature it becomes. So don't worry about putting it all into memory right now. Again, as you use it, it'll become second nature. If you want to see a complete list of keyboard shortcuts, of course, Microsoft also keeps that on file, which you can check out on your own time. For even more great tutorials and our complete catalog of online courses, please visit us at MrFordsClass.com.